Hey there, welcome to Modern Vegan Family. It's Saturday morning and we are starting something brand new this weekend called Vegan Chick Chat. <laughs> so some of my bestie friends that I've got in the vegan world and uh, might be some new guests every weekend, but we're coming on to talk and to share some perspective on some questions that you might have or um, just a general perspective on how life changes as being vegan. And that is our first topic today is... Uh, what are the biggest changes that we've noticed in our life that might be from a health perspective or a relationship perspective or any perspective since being vegan? And my two guests this morning are two very, very special people in my life. Uh, my first guest is Kathy McClellan, a vegan on the go .net, uh, blogger, Instagrammer, um, all around superstar, one of my best friends and soul sisters. And, um, and the other guest is Melissa Ann. Doran from uh, California, you might have seen her on one of my other videos. Actually, you've seen both of them on one of my other videos. And Melissa and I met through Instagram, and she is uh, really passionate. She's got a great following, and uh, she's also a wannabe blogger. So welcome, ladies, to a Vegan Chick Chat. <laughs> and I'm going to put that question out there this morning. What are the biggest changes that, that you've seen in your life since going vegan and I'm going to ask Kathy that first okay <clears throat> well it's interesting that when you asked that question um, last night you proposed that question and um, I the thing that came to mind is everything is different for me everything has changed um, since I become vegan um, I I feel I, I just feel good with things I feel like I was thinking about you know when I'm when I'm scuba diving and I see a fish, I'm like, hello, fish. And I just feel really good around all the animals, right? Because I just feel um, they can feel that I'm not going to, you know, be hurting any animals, right? And, um, and health-wise, because I'm on my eighth year, and I, and I don't want to brag, but I have been really healthy over those eight years. And I travel a lot. I'm in a lot of planes. I'm in a lot of classrooms with a lot of people. And so many people are always telling me how they're unhealthy and they're sick. And that just doesn't, it's not the story in our house. It really isn't. Um, yeah, and I love the food. I absolutely adore eating vegan food. It's so delicious. So, yeah. off the top of my head. <laughs> That's awesome. Melissa, what are, what are some of the changes that you've, big changes that you've noticed for you? You know, I agree with both of you that the the way I feel about the world, I guess you could say, has kind of, it's it's changed. Um, you know, I used to, to imagine, you know, I kind of walked around with these rose-colored glasses that, um, you know, maybe animal cruelty isn't as bad as it is, or maybe the dairy industry or the meat industry is not that bad. But once you learn about it, it's it's kind of like, realizing all this awful thing, all of these awful things in the world. Um, and then my passion just for animal rights blossomed over the years. And I try really hard in a gentle, compassionate way to help others take off their glasses and see the world for what it really is. Um, and also health wise, my goodness, I am young, but I had really, really bad endometriosis that was debilitating. During my cycle, I was living on pain pills in bed, couldn't function because of the pain. And um, since cutting out all animal products and going vegan, I take no medicine. I have zero cramps. It's amazing what our body does when we put things into it that are good for it. When, you know, we take out all of the things that are causing inflammation and all of this awful stuff in our body, um, our body just starts to work better. It kind of knows what to do. Um, so health-wise, you know, I've seen a huge turnaround. I used to suffer from constipation and just bad GI issues, which I, I don't have anymore at all. It's, it's amazing what eating good food can do for your body. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I agree. You know, it's interesting. I'm glad you brought up the C word because <laughs> my husband, there was two things that was always going on in my body at any given time, heartburn and constipation. And, you know, even though um, I was very athletic and, and always doing something, and that is 
it's it's non-existent in my life and and you know it's it's interesting how food is so profound in our life um you know what's interesting for me is that I can also say like there's so many positives I I think food has never been more fun or more tasty it's it's um it's a topic of my heart has never been so expanded to other other beings and it's like Kathy said you know I see now whereas before I I'm I don't think I was ever really super connected to animals and now I'm like oh fishy or oh doggy or I see, I see anything but on the flip side of that I'd have to say one of the things that I've gone through periods of too is deep remorse <clears throat> because I was such a carnivore and um, I remember being super mean, like really mean to my daughter when she was 14 and came home and said she wanted to be vegetarian. And I was not a compassionate mother. I, I sabotaged her efforts I, and apologies to all the pigs, but I, I cooked bacon every day so that the house smelled like bacon. I'm like, I was really mean because it brought up a lot of fear in me and it felt like she was rejecting me as a mother and rejecting my cooking and rejecting how I expressed love. And, you know, I've since apologized many times, but I feel a lot of remorse that it took me 44 years to open my eyes and to see how, um, how I had totally ignored all this cruelty that was going on. And, and now I have a tough time even watching, you know, a 10 second video on what's going on in the animal industry. I mean, I've seen videos where they're pulling hair out of live rabbits for making things and, and how they, you know, drag cows and w with, um, with the forklifts and stuff like that by their legs and, and just, I can't even take five seconds of it and I'm crying. And, and that, I know those tears come from the fact that I feel like, how did I not know this sooner? How did I, how did I ignore it? How was I contributing so much? So that is a big change too, is that, is that there's compassion, but there's also the element of being forgiving to, to myself and trying to, I guess, what do you call that? Kind of make amends, <laughs> you know, doing the work we're doing. Anybody else uh, experience that, Kathy? What about you? I didn't really have quite the same. I mean, I was on and off vegetarian um, a good part of my life. I never felt right about eating meat. I knew it wasn't right. Um, but I then I would just put it out of my mind, right, because I wouldn't think about it. Because if I thought if I really – every time I thought about what I was eating, that's when I would have to stop eating meat. And then, of course, you know, I mean, I'd – to tell you the truth, fish was one of my favorite things to eat. I mean, I just adore fish. That was very, very difficult for me to give up. Um, and we were really lucky because our daughter started even earlier than your daughter when she was about eight. And so she, and she was tough. She was strong. And she helped us. Um, she, we had to, um, she wasn't going to change. She was determined as soon as she found out where meat came from that she wasn't going to ever eat meat again. Um, and so we really tried to help her learn how to do it healthy. And so we ate a lot of that type of food. So, but I always knew it was wrong. I always knew somehow this doesn't seem right to me that we're eating an animal. And so, you know, after a while, you can't stop yourself. You, it's, you have to admit that you're doing it right. So, for me, it was just, I'm just happy I've changed. Um, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I try not to think about the things that I haven't done well in my life too much because what I want to do is focus on what I can do. And that's why I started Vegan on the Go. That's why I started the blog. I didn't even know what a blog was. I just wanted to do something that would help people see that vegan is possible in their lives. And not only is it possible, the food is amazing. You feel great. You're doing so many good things for the planet. I mean, we, each person as a vegan can make such a difference. Like, where else can you make such a difference in the world? One person. You know, in the environment and, and just everything. I mean, one person can be significant. And there's not many places you can do that. So, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm kind of more forward. I just want to, I do feel bad. Uh, I just want to not never do it again and encourage as many, many, many people as I can to consider it as an opportunity to change what they're doing. Yeah. Hallelujah. I think <laughs> I on that. Yeah. I mean, I don't, 
I don't spend a lot of time sitting in that. It's just amazing how sometimes it just hits me where I think, how did I not yeah. see this? You know, yeah. how did I not realize what was going on? Because I didn't really have anybody cluing me in early. I mean, both you and Melissa have told me before that this was tagging on you or hitting on you or you never felt right about it since you were young. <clears throat> Boy, that wasn't my situation. I mean, I, I was raised that, that, you know, it was just the, it was like Melanie Joy says, it was normal. It was necessary. It was, it was natural. That was the way things were, were meant to be. And, but I love how, I love how each of us is, is taking this in a different direction and each of us is, is influencing. And I know Kathy, you're influencing like thousands of people in your social media and your blog and stuff. So, um, Melissa, what about you? Has there been any challenging aspects of it for you? I, you know, I definitely feel the remorse like you do. Um, and I think mostly because as a child, I was personally responsible for, um, I raised pigs in this little rural community thing called 4-H. Yeah. And you raise them and they, without a doubt, were my best friends. These two pigs that I had were my best friends. And... I feel such remorse because I, even though I was young, um, I was in fourth grade, I knew what was going to happen to them. I mm -hmm. did know. Um, I didn't think it was right, but I didn't think I was big enough or powerful enough to say, no, um, I'm not sending them away to do this. I choice and I, I mean, I allowed it. I allowed them to know my love and my compassion. And then I, Send them away to this awful fate, which I, for years, didn't think about at all. Um, but now you can see, like, it breaks, it truly breaks my heart when I think of it. I don't want to get teary on you guys, but it really, really, really does. It breaks my heart. Um, so, yes, clearly I feel remorse, and it's, it's challenging. I visit farm sanctuaries on the weekends, and it's, it's so beautiful for me to see these animals that are saved. But at the same time, I see in those animals, all of the ones that, you know, we're not saving. And it, mm -hmm. it really does break, break my heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to cry in <laughs> chick chat. <laughs> well, I know when you say that, like every time I see a picture of a cow, a beautiful cow, I just love cows so much. I've always loved them. And, um, uh, but they have a tag on their ear and it, and that, that, because oh. I just look at them and I think I know where they're going to go. And they're so, I mean, cows are just like this to me. Their, their energy is so peaceful and so grounded and they're, you know, and I, when I see those tags, that, that's what breaks my heart. Cause I know that they're, they're doomed, right? They're doomed. And at the same time, I think just everything we're doing is every person that you meet, every, every time we do something like this, Lisa, um, you, you had a really great um, YouTube video on what are going to happen. I love that one. Or what, what will happen to all the animals? Because I know that's one of the things that people say, right? And Dr. Gregory with his research and everybody, it's, there's, there's such a wave of desire to move in this direction. And so we're all just doing our little bit, right? And I know, and you were such a young child, Melissa. I mean, I know that you would never do that today as an adult. <laughs> You're sweet. I'm done. No more tears. I wiped them away. Um, so, you know, um, it, it, it's sad for me. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess, you know, I, I do feel like we are making a huge difference. I feel on... Um, I feel all the vegan love on my social media accounts. I think I just wish I knew a way to better influence those I personally see on a daily basis. You know, if I could get through to my family, it would be such a bigger accomplishment to me than hitting, you know, however many followers on social media. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, I think it takes time. And I do think we are making a huge difference. We really are. Mm -hmm. I have to share something with you when you said the thing about family, which was when I think one of the best things that ever happened to me is, of course, I, don't know, I came into the, I was the one who brought it into the house. My daughter was like, oh, finally. And, you know, she was on board with it right away. And um, my husband, Joel, 
<clears throat> was always was always on board at home but then sometimes in that first year if he was out and with his friends or with his brothers or dad or something like that it was it was a little bit challenging at first and um and then he switched that around by you know often bringing the food and saying oh i'll cook for you and 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 really stepping into ownership of something that i knew he was believing at home um but still sometimes it's hard it's hard to live in a rural community and and feel like you're you know you're kind of the only weirdo i guess that's for lack of a better word but one of the things that's given me the greatest joy is um I remember I was doing dishes one night and I said to him, if I died, <laughs> I'm not planning on it anytime soon. And I said, if I died, would you stop being vegan? Is this something that you did for me or is it something that you have done for yourself? And he said, oh, I, I would never go back. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've seen him grow as such a, an, an just amazing, um, compassionate in his, in his awareness. And I think a great advocate, like he's not a big out there advocate like I am, but just in his own silent and very grounded way, he's showing men that you can do this and it doesn't make you strange. Um, in fact, you know, he looks younger. His health has never been better. We've never enjoyed food more. It's, it's something, modern vegan family is something we all work together here as a family. So I think that was probably one of my biggest wins is seeing my family, my own personal family, all converting. So there's three of us that are vegan, three are vegetarian, and they're moving towards it. And wow, I mean, it was and, and when you have that, it, I don't know, it, and seeing all the people in the community, the ones who do come up and talk, and we've got some real passionate followers who are, who are really taking it and running with it and embracing being vegan. And boy, that just does my heart good. It, nothing matters other than to see that because I know they're influencing people and so on. So um, Melissa, some final words on, on, you know, if you were to say this has been the best journey of my life, um, in, to encourage people to kind of overcome their fears and, and say, wow, I would like that experience too. Share, share some final thoughts before we wrap up today. Or chick chat. <laughs> I agree. This has been the best, um, at times most difficult, kind of in the fact that you feel very alone, or I know I did, um, but it has been the most rewarding, most healthy four years of my life. Um, I frequently encourage people to not think of it right now, if you're interested in veganism, not think of it as an all or nothing thing. It doesn't have to be when you start out. It's not scary, um, but I think sometimes all or nothing does scare people. So I'd like to encourage people, just start small. We frequently hear, oh, I'd be vegan, but I love cheese. Okay, stop eating everything, but, and the rest will come. <laughs> What about you, Kathy? Well, I don't know what I, what I wanted to share for my final thing, because when you talked about your family, I wanted to talk about my husband for a sec, too. Because, Melissa, you probably don't want my husband had um, cancer. And so he went through radiation and chemotherapy, and so he actually couldn't eat meat. And that's how he used to do kind of like what Lisa's husband did. He would be good at home, but then he'd run out to A&W, get a burger and something like that, right? But, um, and so now he's five years clear, which is wonderful. And I asked kind of this, a different question than Lisa. I, I asked him about three years when he was, his saliva glands started to come back a bit better. Would you eat meat now if you could? And he's very much like Lisa's husband, Joel. He's like, no, it just makes no sense, you know? And then the other thing I wanted to add, you know, with my family, we have people that are all over the place with this and experimenting. But every time they come to my house, I just make them the best food. Um, and they love coming over here. They just want to see what's Auntie Kathy going to make this time. And so it just gets them curious, right? And then they want to come and cook with me. And so it's just, you know, kind of one step at a time. But go through the stomach. That's my advice for you. Cook <laughs> some Get good food and invite people over, which I'm sure you're already doing. Yeah. You know what? And that's, that's what I would say to people too. You know, if you're already partway there, find somebody, you know, get excited about the cooking like, like I did and Kathy did and Melissa's done and invite people over, have potlucks, make it fun, show people how delicious it is. All the rest comes along because I wasn't attracted to veganism because of, of the animal ethics. And that, that came later. Um, I was quite close 
close to that. I didn't really make the connection with that. I came to it through the environment, but then everything comes along naturally anyways. Like it's the evolution that we go through. So you're right. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. We all evolve as we go, but make it fun along the way. And certainly first and foremost, make good food. <laughs> make good food, share it and share it in any way possible and share how awesome it is. And, um, so ladies, I love you. You know that. It's it's so much fun to have chick chat. I wish we could do it for forever, but uh, unfortunately, you know, we're going to do these in little little segments and we're going to come back with other topics on Saturday chick chat, vegan chick chat. So, um give some give some love. So, thanks for coming to Modern Vegan Family for joining Kathy and Melissa and I. Go check out Kathy vegan on the go.net. Go check out Melissa, all things Melissa Ann. Both of them are our, our big Instagram superstars. Please subscribe here to Modern Vegan Family and check out my website, modernveganfamily.com. Lots of video content on recipes, commentary, interviews, etc. Happy Saturday, everybody. Make it vegalicious. Peace, love, and plants. <laughs>